Oh, you gotta go down further. There you go. Yeah! Are you, are you pooping? Yeah, good. Welcome back to my channel. So good to have you here. This is another Baby 101 video. Hooray! Uh, with a new baby. So I started this Baby 101 series last year with my son, Wilson, who is now almost a year and a half old. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how I take care of Juliet. So like I said, she was born six weeks early and she her due date was like two weeks ago. So she's about eight weeks old, but she's still pretty fresh like a newborn. And she has reflux. That's the major difference between her and my other two children. I've never had a reflux baby before, but it, there's, there's a, lot, a lot of differences. So I'm gonna be showing you how I take care of her. Sorry that the lighting is not great. We don't have any sort of light behind the camera. We used to have a ring light, but then it fell over and that was the death of my ring light. And it's the morning and so that's that's the lighting if you're annoyed by that. Also, this video, before I start the actual 101-ing, this video is a partnership with a brand that I, that I really like. As a new mother and a nursing mother right now, oh, sorry, actually I'm a pumping mother a lot of the time. I want quick and easy food, and so we were turned on to Built Bar. It's a protein bar that tastes like, to me it tastes like chocolate truffles, you know, the truffles that have all the different flavors. Built has 18 flavors. So fun for somebody who's eating a lot of different bars. <laughs> this one that I have today is white chocolate cookies and cream. This I think is my kid's favorite one. <laughs> they do steal them from me. You probably have seen on my Instagram if you follow me there. You can see Wilson in the morning holding on to a protein bar. Uh, this one has 130 calories and 17 grams of protein. So it tastes indulgent and amazing, but it's good for you and really easy to have and just a nice treat. So if you use my link in the description box below, you'll get 20% off your order and that will be automatically added to your order at checkout if you use my link. Highly recommend them, love them. Now let's jump into taking care of this little baby. It's 9.54, she just woke up after sleeping for about three hours. She sleeps anywhere from an hour and a half to four hours at different stretches. I find that her belly is the most okay in the mornings and then as the day progresses, she is more fussy and seems to have trouble. Reflex is where, well, I'm not a medical minded person, so I'm gonna explain it the way I understand it. What I understand to be happening to Jules is something that's very common in babies but extra common in premature babies and that is that their their esophagus is not fully developed their sphincter which is the thing that's keeping stuff going the proper direction right it's closing so the food can't come back up that is not fully developed so when she drinks milk it's coming back up that was a problem when she was in the NICU she was in the NICU for 21 days because it kept coming back up and then she she would experience a drop in her heart rate. So I think it meant that she was kind of sort of choking on it. And so they kept her in there on different monitors and on medication until she got developed enough where it wasn't scary for us to have her come home, that she would be safe coming home. They did send her home on a monitor. So we were tracking to make sure everything was going okay. Yep. Anyway, so that's the little background. So what, you're okay. She's passing gas and it seems like it's hurting her. Okay. She seems to like laying flat sometimes. Yeah, to get her gas out. So I have an ottoman right here. I usually sit in a chair right here when I nurse. And inside of it, it has diapers and wipes and also diaper rash cream. So I'm gonna change her diaper. The smartest way I've found to change a baby's diaper is to put the clean diaper underneath the dirty one and then slide the dirty one out that way if the baby pees or poops while you're doing a diaper change which is super common with new babies oops, gotta move this way then it's not going to get on whatever you're doing the diaper change on many people are going to do their diaper changes on like a diaper changing table or something that is very protective. Um, I have three children and I end up doing diaper changes in really random places. And I found that just having that diaper underneath is helpful. I will say that already in this little one's life, she has peed on me, she's peed on my stuff, she's pooped in my hand. <laughs> so you still may experience some adventures. 
if they seem to be having gas as a problem, when you lay them on their back, you can pump their legs like that and that should help get the gas out or uh, bicycle their legs, that'll help. I also sometimes do massaging of the tummy and I go clockwise on her tummy. I've done this with all of my kids and that helps get gas out. I think she's fussing because she's hungry. So I fed her a little bit before this video so that she wouldn't freak out. But now I'm gonna feed her. In the NICU, we were, I was only nursing her one time a day. And, um, oh, what I'm doing right now is feeling to see which one is harder because that's where more milk is. Because I can't always remember what I did last. And I'm wearing like a sweatshirt that I'm just gonna nurse her right under. So you, if you're gonna be breastfeeding, then you hold yourself like a hamburger, hold your breast like a hamburger, and shove it in their mouth. Okay, you got it, honey. Okay. In the NICU, she breastfed one time a day only, and it was with a nipple shield. That was my first experience ever with a nipple shield. It's like this little clear see-through kind of like a contact lens. It's like very thin and you put it on there. It was helpful because I could see that milk was coming through it. So it was like a real measurable way of knowing that she was getting milk. But then once we got home, I was able to breastfeed her more throughout the day and she latched really well without the nipple shield. She has a small tongue tie, which is that thing underneath your tongue. When a baby has a tongue tie, that, that thing goes out very far to the end of the tongue and makes it hard for them to latch sometimes. My son Wilson has it really uh, big. People notice it in photographs, <laughs> but he breastfed very well. So for this little baby, she has a slight tongue tie and what the doctor was having us do was stretch it. So before each feeding, I was putting my finger under her tongue and massaging it for 10 seconds. So you go like around 10 times. I will be honest with you, I forget to do that pretty much all the time now that I'm home, but I did do it every feeding in the hospital. They did it even before bottle feedings. Now that we're home with her, we've been experimenting with some different things because the reflux, the fact that the milk is coming back up because the sphincter is not closing properly or something, I think is what's happening. She was spitting up a lot and really fussy and it's sort of like a heartburn feeling, I would imagine, and that's just not nice. So we were advised, wait, I should back up. So in the hospital, we were mostly giving her breast milk, but then because her reflux was causing her heart rate to drop, they switched to feeding her formula, maybe every other feeding, I think is what it was. And it was formula with, I think it was formula AR, which I think means added rice cereal. <laughs> Not totally sure, but I know that it was a thicker formula. So that's supposed to weigh it down and not come up as easily. And she did well on that. I then learned from my doctor that we could do kind of the same thing by adding rice cereal to the breast milk and feeding her that with a bottle. So we do that for her. Every night she takes, probably starting at like 10 o'clock at night, she'll take a bottle and then if she has two more feedings or something in the night, then we do those as bottle feedings. So sometimes she ends up with two bottles in the night and sometimes she ends up with three bottles. And that's between the hours of like 10 at night and six in the morning. Once six in the morning rolls around, I usually am breastfeeding her again. And we did have a day where we did bottles all day long because she was really fussy and seemed to really be like disrupted by the, the spitting, spitting up. It was like projectile and seemed really painful. So for the next day after that happened, she received a bottle all day long and I pumped, mixed her breast milk with rice cereal all day long. The problem that happened after that 24 hour stretch was she seemed constipated and uncomfortable in a different way. So then we switched it up to uh, just do the nighttime bottles with formula or with rice cereal in them. We just added an additional one. So I'm sounding a little confusing. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but basically we just ensure that in the nighttime hours, she's getting the breast milk with the rice cereal in it and that is helping her. In between feeding her, if you have a reflux C baby or maybe any baby would benefit from this, we burp her often. And this little baby, she spits up a lot. So the way that I am burping her right now 
it is so cute <laughs> so you put your your hand kind of on her like chin her like jaw area like this and lean oh sorry boo -boo, and lean her body over and like my palm is up against her chest and then I'm just gonna burp her and I, I really don't burp her too hard she feels a little bit more fragile than my other kids did and also she makes a whimpering sound if it's too hard which is the saddest thing ever and then I also rub her and then I lean her back and sometimes the leaning back helps move the air up but what they said to do in the hospital was just to burp her as often as I can to try and help air not get trapped in there because that makes the reflex worse so uh, one great thing about Jules is that she's pretty good at burping and she even sometimes burps on her own. Wow! <laughs> I hope you saw that. Burps on her own. Wow! That's cool. That was a lot. So maybe she just did that for you guys. Have a blanket underneath where she's going to spit up. That was an accident. <laughs> um, okay, so she just spit up what feels like everything we just ate. So well, that's unfortunate. And I guess we're gonna go at it again. Sometimes if she starts to seem uncomfortable at that point, I just hold her up on my shoulder and let her chill while everything kind of goes down. Um, if she starts to root at my shoulder, which means like look like she wants to nurse on my shoulder, then I'll put her back down and nurse her some more. This sound might mean that she's uncomfortable. I could offer her some more milk. Yeah, I'm sorry. Hi. So this is the rice cereal that I'm using. And we typically have been feeding her out of this bottle, which is the hospital bottle that they gave us. We have other bottles that we're going to switch to as she gets a little bit older, maybe even like in a week or two. But this one goes up to 60 ml. And we do about 10 ml and then what i've been doing is just adding the breast milk to it and shaking it all around i hope that makes sense to you if i breastfeed her all throughout the day then i'm gonna pump usually i pump like first thing in the morning and then i also pump at the end of the day the reason why we're doing the breast milk route is for one i just wanted to breastfeed because i have breast milk and she can also it was cheaper than formula so if formula suits your family better we're on board with that too she did really well with the formula actually but just for us we would like to do the breast milk and the rice cereal for as long as we're able you're gonna want to hold them upright as long as you're able to after a feeding roughly 30 minutes is what was recommended to us so i will hold her on my shoulder i have a swing right over here like if I have my knees propped up like this, she sits right here, or we've put her up on a pillow. We also have her little lounger here. I've used both a Snuggle Me Organic and a Dock -a Tot, so at some point I'd be happy to tell you what, uh, what my personal preference is. But right now this one that we're using here uh, is on a little bit of an incline and I know that there are mixed reviews on putting a baby on an incline but for any mother that I've spoken to who has a child that has reflux they've all encouraged me to do it and actually at the hospital they had her on an incline the reason why they don't want you doing that is they don't want your baby to not um, not be able to breathe if their head goes down and the airway gets blocked but she sleeps like that when we are there with her or she has a monitor on her and we're always right next to her goodness oh goodness so if they start to choke a little bit which happens you can just prop them up however it's comfortable for you and you just do a little patting and so after she eats i hold her up like this if you want to give your baby a bath the hospital recommended i bathe her before feeding her uh, just all of the movement of that might make her spit up more even diaper changes i sometimes do diaper changes after feedings like if she's pooped a lot during a feeding i'll do it but they recommended that i don't do it until about 15 minutes after a feeding unless she's crying really hard and seems really uncomfortable or something and everything really is centered around keeping your baby upright so that the milk you're giving your baby will go down there are some things you can do if your baby is crying inconsolably one of the things you can do is quickly swaddle them up I know that I just told you not to lay your baby down, but say you've been holding your baby up for like 10 or 15 minutes and they're still crying really hard. At that point, if they're not going to eat anymore because they're coming to you and then resisting the milk that you're giving the baby, which happens and it's really tricky, 
then I would suggest laying the baby down, making sure their diaper is clean, and doing a quick swaddle, which if you wanna know how to swaddle the baby, you can go to my Instagram, and we have a short video that we made, me and my friend Becca here, of how to swaddle a baby that could be helpful. Otherwise, there's swaddles available that you can get that are super simple. You just lay your baby down, and it's like a zip-up swaddle or a Velcro swaddle, all kinds of things. So many products you'll find to try and make your life easier. And then, you can do a variety of different bouncing techniques. So you can bounce your baby like this. A lot of people love to use an exercise ball that they sit on and bounce. Uh, you can turn your baby kind of on the side a little bit. I don't wanna agitate her belly too much, but you kind of turn the baby on the side and, hi sweetie, hi, and hold them like this and bounce them like that. Keep in mind though, you might get spit up everywhere at some point, but what you're trying to do at that point is just soothe your little baby who's having a hard time. It's really common for babies to cry in the evening. I'm not totally sure why, I just know that that is a thing. Moms, dads, we talk about it, it's a real life thing. In the evenings they cry harder. Hi. Hi. I sometimes hold her like this and bounce her because she seems to like it. She likes our swing, which rocks her side to side. Patting the booty seems to be really effective in whatever way you want to pat them. Oh, sound. So we have a sound machine. I sometimes will turn that on right by her head and it seems to be very calming. She also has responded well to piano music, like classical music and the sound of a hair dryer or a washer machine or a vacuum cleaner. So there's apps that have all of these sounds on them that you can use or you can buy a little sound machine, um, like a literal machine that you can plug into the wall and it makes sound. I have both. On my phone I have an app that I use and then we have real sound machines in every room to help the kids be calm at sleep time. And it's been really effective to do that. I actually really like it too for myself. And oh, she's spitting up on my shirt. That happens too. People say pack extra clothes for you and the baby when you go out places because you both get really messy. I just have given up on looking good. And that's what the world gets, is me looking like I've been spit up on a bunch of times. Cause that's my real life. I pretty much never dress my tiny babies in anything other than sleepers. Really easy to use little sleepy, comfy, cozy clothes that are soft. And my favorite kind of onesies are the kind that zip both ways. We actually sell some on Very Good Mothers Club if you wanna see what I mean. But it's the kind that enables you to do a diaper change without having to fully open up their jammies because the more their jammies are open, the more awake they get because it gets chilly. So that's what I love. So I just pull the neck as much as possible. I sometimes will pull it down off of their body or sometimes like what I just did here was I pulled it over her head but I was able to stretch it super wide and she was fine. If your baby cries a little bit while you're getting them ready, that's okay. You just remind them they're okay and move from there. Everything is totally fine. Sean the other day accidentally took her out of a sleeper the wrong way and like had to really yank on her head to get it out and she recovered fine. <laughs> and he afterwards was like, wow, that was like the worst, worst I've done with getting her undressed. And here she is just alive and well. So let me see, where did her jammies go? <laughs> She's like, what are you doing, mother? Hi, don't fall, please. What are you doing? <laughs> Normally when I get her dressed, I lay her down, but because we just nursed and she already had her big spit up, bless you, I'm not gonna do that. And here we go, where's your little arm? Wow, I'm definitely doing this the harder way. You know what you can give your baby to help with their fussiness if they're struggling? A product called Gripe Water. It's made with like fennel and some other things. It's just like a homeopathic product you can get at any store, like any over-the-counter store, right? Uh, how do you say that? Drugstore? Over-the-counter? <laughs> I don't know. Gripe water. You can get it on Amazon too. It is supposedly good for colicky babies, for gas, if they have gas, it calms them. Sometimes with Wilson, I would just dip his pacifier in it and give it to him and I think they like the taste. It's something you can also do gas drops. I think it helps collect the gas in their body and like help them get it out of their body more easily. And then I heard of a thing which I've never used, but maybe it works. I've heard that it's amazing. 
it's uh what's it called kind of catheter thing that you t put in your baby's tush and it gets the gas out like it basically creates a little pathway where any gas that's trapped can come out and it makes a whistling sound when the gas comes out i don't know okay now the problem is their little digestive systems are all like squished in there in this tiny little body. And when you push their legs up, it squishes everything up and makes it a lot easier to spit up. Hi, also, I don't know how your pregnancy was, but I had a lot of heartburn while pregnant and laying flat on my back made it worse. So I, she's gonna go to sleep pretty soon. Newborn babies are not awake for very long and uh, they take a gazillion naps. It's, uh, it's a short time. So if you're in the middle of caring for a refluxy baby and you're like really exhausted and discouraged, I want you to know it's gonna go away sooner than you think. The days are gonna feel really long while you're doing them, but it gets a lot, lot, lot better. And I know that because I have two kids and they grow and I can see so clearly what we're building here with this baby. So you're gonna do great, you're doing great. I just want you to know that if I can do this, anybody can do this. And I totally believe in you guys to make this happen. In my family, what we're doing right now that's been really helpful is because this baby takes a bottle, Sean, my husband, gives her a bottle a couple times in the night so that I can get longer stretches of sleep. That's what's been working best for our family. Find some rhythms in your family that allow you to get some rest when you can because I feel that rest, in my experience, is a game changer as far as how you experience motherhood. If you can find a way to rest your body and mind in some way, then you will feel a lot more capable and a lot more joyful and um and on the days that you can't get rest which i have those too it's really those are not my favorite days um just remind yourself it's a short-lived season okay and we can totally get through this and what you're building is worth it and it's amazing if you need more support in your parenting journey don't forget to join us on facebook we have a private group called jess hover and friends and you can request to be in there and there's really great people in there that can help give you encouragement advice you know cheer you on however you need you can follow me on instagram if you want to see more of my family and don't forget to check out very good mothers club if you want really great products for families and gifts for friends and um yeah just thank you so much for being here so we'll see you very soon okay bye see bye bye